Kelly here for Soy and Shane. Thank you so much for joining me. Now I've been getting a lot of questions lately about what oils are in my soap banking buckets and pretty much what is my soap recipe. Now because this weekend's soap doesn't have any embeds on it to make, I decided that the behind the scenes video this week would be about my soap recipe, weighing it out and things like that. I am also at a point where I have been tweaking my recipe and I am really really happy with it and I am ready to start sharing it with you guys. So I will be leaving it in the description box from this point onwards and you are welcome to try it or to tweak it into your own as well. But before we actually get into weighing out the recipe, I want to actually discuss a few things about how I came up with the recipe that I am sharing with you. I have four different recipes which I am currently using. I have one for my facial bar and I have one for my Cleveland honey bar, both of them are palm free. And I also have two recipes which I use for all of my decorative soaps. Now when I first started soap making and I was a part of all the Facebook groups and the forums and things like that, I felt a real social pressure to come up with a palm free recipe. It was basically put upon me that palm oil is bad, it is bad for you, it is bad for the environment and that if I chose to use palm oil in my soaps that nobody would buy them and therefore I would not have a successful soap side of my business. So I worked really hard at coming up with a palm free recipe to use in my decorative soaps and I'm really happy with that recipe. It is fairly easy to work with except for on hot days and it produces a really great bar of soap. So I'm the sort of person that gets really curious. If you present me with information here, I will always start to look at it from out here, look in, in on it from a different perspective and that is exactly what I did with my soap making. I started to become really curious as to why all the really big soap making companies and all the really successful handmade soap businesses were using palm oil if it was so detrimental to your business name. And I really wanted to know what properties that palm oil could bring to a bar of soap. Now I knew that Katie Carson from Royalty Soap so generously shares her recipe in the description box of all of her soap making videos. So I decided rather than trying to come up with a recipe because I didn't know enough about palm oil, I actually wanted to go and try her recipe out. So I made myself a small loaf that made about four or five bars of soap and I was super impressed. It soaked really well, it made a beautiful bar of soap and I could actually feel the different benefits of incorporating palm oil into my soap which we will discuss a little bit later. My next concern was actually my customers and I decided rather than listening to people in the Facebook groups and forums and all the scaremongering there, I would actually ask my customers. So I put it out on my Facebook page as a poll, would you continue to buy my soaps if I incorporated palm oil into them? Now of everyone that came back to me, 94% of them said that providing it was still a long lasting bar of soap that smelt great and wasn't drying on the skin, then yes, they would continue to buy my soap. I can tell you right now that the 6% of people that said that they wouldn't actually do still buy my bars of soap because they have experienced what the palm oil brings to them. So armed with the information that I liked the benefits that the palm oil brought to a bar of soap and that my customers were also going to be happy if I started using it, I decided to start playing with the Royalty Soaps recipe. It is a really great recipe for anyone who is wanting to use it, but I wanted a recipe that actually reflected my business. So I started to tweak a few of the oils and do a few things. So you will actually notice in my recipe below, it is very, very close to her recipe because I did base it off of hers, but there are bits in there that actually reflect my business as soy and shea. I know a lot of you are going to be disappointed that I use the palm oil in my soap and that this is the recipe that I am choosing to share with you guys. So I did want to actually discuss a couple of other things with you before we jump into weighing out all of the ingredients. Now while doing my research into palm oil, the one thing that did ring true from all of those sort of Facebook groups and pages was the environmental impact that palm oil has had in the past to create the palm oil plantations. There has been a lot of rainforest that has been cut down, a lot of habitat that has been lost, a lot of wildlife that has been endangered from it. 
and this should be a reason enough not to use it. I started to subconsciously think about all the other oils that I use in my daily life, whether that be in the kitchen for cooking or whether that be for the other soap making oils or whether it be for moisturizers and balms. At the end of the day, any plant or vegetable oil has to be farmed and to create these farms, land has to be cleared and whether that be rainforest or bushland or anything else, that land has to be cleared which clears habitat which clears animals homes and puts animals in danger as well but nobody ever stops to think about the impact of growing olive oil coconut oil avocado oil the list is endless the only oil that I have within my range of products that comes with a certificate to say that it is sustainably grown is the palm oil so armed with that sort of knowledge, this is what enabled me to step over that hurdle and decide that I was going to go ahead and start using palm oil in my recipes. Now I know not everyone is going to agree with that perspective as to why I just managed to get over that hurdle about using palm oil, but if you are somebody who is struggling with that sort of controversial social side of palm oil that is just something else that you can consider about whether or not you want to incorporate it into your recipe or not now before i get too many more thumbs down because i am using and sharing a recipe that has palm oil in it let's get into measuring out our oils butters and lye and discussing the recipe that i am going to be sharing with you from this point forward let's go so if you've been around for a while you'll notice we are back to our old filming angle and that is because I didn't want you just constantly looking into a white bucket as I fill it up with bits and pieces. Whenever I'm making a soap the first thing I do is I log on to soap calc. Well I don't log on I just open it up in the browser because you don't actually need to be registered or anything to use this free software. I find it one of the easiest soap calculators to use out there but you can really use whatever you feel most comfortable with. I then input all the oils that I want to use at the percentages I'm going to use and then I work out how much oil I want to use in my molds. Now with my particular oil or my particular mold, I use anywhere between 1.7 and 2.3 kilos of oil. This isn't how much your bar of soap is going to weigh because you then have to take into consideration the amount of live fragrance and the water that goes in as well. On this particular occasion, I've told it I want to use 2.3 because we're going to do a bit of piping, a bit of sculpting on this next soap as well. So I want that extra soap to make sure I have got enough. Anything that is left over from that, then I'll actually just make up some extra little giveaway soaps as well. So the first thing I'm going to measure out is my sodium hydroxide and my water to make up my lye solution. There is just no getting around this. It has to be used to actually create that reaction of saponification to make soap. So there is just no way of getting around using lye, no matter what people tell you. I am using distilled water. Um, I am hoping to very soon work with other ingredients like milk and um, aloe vera juice and things like that. But for now, I am just using water. When I measure out my water, I try to make sure that I don't go under what it says, but I'm always quite happy to go about 10 grams over what the calculator says to use. The reason being is that um, when we add in our um, sodium hydroxide, this is going to heat up and it's going to produce steam. And whenever it produces steam, it's going to evaporate the water. So if I'm putting spot on what it says or just under, I'm going to end up with less than that 33% that I'm comfortable at or soaping at. So the next thing I'm going to add in here is a little bit of tussar silk, which comes from off the silkworms. I'm just going to put in a small amount in there. And when we add our sodium hydroxide, it will melt it down. The reason I choose to put the, the tussar silk in is because I really like the silky feeling that it gives to a bar of soap. 
The next thing I am putting in is my sodium hydroxide and this is the bit that I know frightens most people. But like all things which are dangerous in this world, as long as it is treated with respect and care and handled appropriately, you will be fine. So I have got my gloves on. I use nitrile gloves. I used to buy just the cheap vinyl gloves and I used to find they ripped and teared and all sorts. Your nitrile gloves do cost more than your vinyl gloves, but I find that they are far more longer lasting and I go through less of them. So at the end of the day, even though they do cost more for a box of them, they actually do work out cheaper because they don't rip and tear on me as easily. I also have on my hairnet, which you can't see, and I do have a mask to put on. And just above me here is my window, which I will open up so that some of the steam can go out through the window. And that is basically it. Um, as long as you treat the rest of it with care, you are perfectly safe to use the sodium hydroxide. Now, if you are relatively new to measuring out your sodium hydroxide, unlike water where you can actually go over or under the required amount, you can't do that with lye. You can go a little bit under, but it's not very good to go over because the calculator will calculate exactly how much lye you need to turn the oils into soap. And if you want to learn more about that, I highly suggest popping on to any of the links that I've got down below and they will give you more information about what happens in the saponification process. If you are new to it and you're not confident about pouring straight into your water, just weigh your, um, your sodium hydroxide into a glass bowl on your scales and then pour it into your water. But always make sure that you put your sodium hydroxide into your water and not water onto your sodium hydroxide because then you, there can be some rather nasty effects from working that way. So I'm actually going to pop my mask on for a moment and I'm going to weigh out the correct amount of sodium hydroxide that I need, but you won't understand me with my mask on. So, here we go. So most of those fumes have now evaporated from off of there. I'm just giving it a bit of a stir which will help to dissolve that tussar silk. It is cloudy at the moment but you know this is fully dissolved when it actually goes clear. Just to get, show you what has happened here, we have an exothermic reaction when you mix the two of them together and we are sitting anywhere between, it keeps hovering between about 95 and up to 97 degrees um, Celsius which is 207 degrees Fahrenheit so this is really really hot and it is definitely not a temperature that we want to be making soap with so what I'm going to do is go and pop this to one side and let it cool down and I like to soak at room temperature or around that 26 to 28 degrees so I'll go and pop this to one side and I will be back to measure the oils Okay, so let's get our hard butters and oils weighed out first. We do the hard butters and oils first so we can melt them down. And then when you add in your liquid oils, it actually brings down the temperature of those hard oils that you've weighed out. The first one I'm going to weigh out is that ever so controversial oil, palm oil. Some of the reasons I did decide that I wanted to try and, and liked the benefits of it is not just because it produces a harder, longer lasting bar, but because that it gives a really rich, creamy lather to the bar of soap, and it is very conditioning and produces a milder bar of soap as well. So if you've got a lot of coconut oil in your recipe, the palm oil will actually help to bring down that conditioning effect and make it a lot more, um, sorry, it will bring down the cleansing effect and make it far more conditioning. So I really liked that. Some of the other things that I have read about palm oil is that it is meant to have antioxidant and it also has antibacterial properties and is supposedly loaded with vitamin A, C and E. Whether those properties are still remaining once the soap has saponified, I really don't know, but just in case, I really liked those benefits of this oil. 
So the next hard butter that we are putting into our bucket here is the Shea butter. So as you know, my business name is Soy and Shea. The Soy actually stands for all the soy candles and melts that I make. And the Shea butter is just one of those ingredients that I love incorporating in all my bath and body products. And I wanted to incorporate it in my soap. And this is where my recipe differs from that of the Royalty Soaps recipe. I wanted to include the shea butter, but it couldn't just be, and I did try it, couldn't just put it in at the 5% of the sweet almond oil that um, Katie uses. Sweet almond oil is a soft oil, and shea butter is obviously a hard butter. So doing a like for like swap meant that it was going to give me a thicker batter which traced a lot quicker so it was about finding the amount of shea butter that I needed to use to give me the benefits of using shea butter but not um, altering the texture of the recipe too much and I found that sort of perfect percentage for me. I love using shea butter it is so nice and moisturizing and it also um, has what they say is 8% unsaponifiables, which means 8% of this shea butter in this recipe will not turn into soap. And that's not including my super fat, that is just 8% of that shea butter will not turn into soap. And it remains in the soap, leaving it nice and moisturizing. And it really adds to a silky feel of that bar of soap. The downside, as mentioned, of using um, shea butter is that it does trace quickly, which is why I needed to work out a really nice percentage of shea butter to include in the recipe that I still included it as part of my business name, but got a, a, um, a soap recipe that was easy to work with. So I'm going to go and pop these in the microwave and just melt this down, and then we'll come back and add our liquid oils. Okay, so we are melted down on those hard oils and butters in there. And some of you are probably thinking, well, hang on, you've just done your hard oils. Where's your coconut oil? Surely you use coconut oil. I do use coconut oil, but we are in the middle of the summer here in Australia. And my coconut oil is actually in liquid state at the moment. In winter, I would have added my coconut oil into the bucket and I would have melted it down with all of those oils in there. But being summer and this is liquid, there is no point heating up a liquid oil. You may as well use that liquid oil to cool these oils down. So what I'm going to do is measure out some coconut oil. Now I use the coconut oil not only because it is pretty much a staple in soap making, it produces a really bubbly lather. So it's the, those really big bubbles that people just think they need to have to get clean. So I do put the, the coconut oil in for that. It does all produ also produce a really hard bar of soap. But as mentioned before, it is very cleansing and which is why I balance it out with that palm oil. Um, even though it gives those really big bubbles, the palm oil will then also help to Oops, didn't turn my scale out. <laughs> and the two with their sort of bubbling condition, so coconut oil has a really big bubbling um, effect, whereas your palm oil has a really rich creamy lather with small bubbles. The two of them actually complement each other really well and balance it out so you get those nice bubbles that everybody really likes, but it is also quite a dense bubble as well. Right, so the next oil we are going to put in is some olive oil and there are lots of different olive oils out there on the market. I only use extra virgin olive oil for certain soaps. It is so deep and rich in colour because it is that first pressing of the olives that I find that if I'm trying to make a blue soap and I've got extra virgin olive oil in there, I get a green soap and you know it just really messes with my mica colours. I usually try and use a just a classic olive oil from our local grocery store. I thought I was actually getting a, a good special on this oil from a local company. It's a pomace olive oil. Um, it, it appeared to be cheaper than the supermarket and then when I went to pick it up they'd actually increase the price of it making it more expensive. I've been using it so it's a pomace olive oil and it really doesn't make any difference to the saponification values but what I have discovered along the way is that 
the pomace olive oil has unsaponifiables in it, much like the shea butter does. And those unsaponifiables can actually accelerate the trace of your soap batter. And I'm wondering, because I've been using this for my last few soaps, if that has been contributing not only because of the heat that we're experiencing, but has been contributing to how quickly my batter has been moving. Unfortunately, I've got another two of these cartons sitting under my, um, my table here that I need to get through before I can go back to my classic olive oil. So that is something to consider when you are purchasing olive oil. So I'm going to pour this one in here. I'm not going to talk while I do it because I keep overshooting or undershooting. exhausted that tin of olive oil which is a good thing because I wanted to share with you guys a little tip with your olive oil if you are buying them in those really big containers. I'm just going to push that one out the way for a moment and just grab in one of my new cans here and I'm going to show you two different things. So we'll just get this one open. Right so if I was to start just pouring my olive oil out of this tin and into my bucket we end up with this kind of glug 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 like it goes slow and then it will actually glug and it splatters everywhere and then you end up overshooting what sort of weight that you're aiming for so I got this idea after getting in um, some olive oil which had a little air vent on the back of it and it made pouring of my oil so much easier I have here a screwdriver which I actually keep aside just for this purpose. I am going to spray it with some 70% rubbing alcohol, just leave it for a couple of seconds and then wipe it clean. Then what I do is just on the back, so behind my spout, I put my screwdriver and you could use anything that you can make a hole with. I get my mallet and I just put a hole into the can and I've done this on numerous occasions I've never had any bits of metal that have ended up in the oil because I double checked it the first time I did this I actually had an almost empty can when I did it and I poured the remnants of the oil into a jug and there was no metal shards in there so I do this every time now now when we go to pour we get a really nice smooth pour and I just need one more gram in there. Right so the final oil I am going to add in here is going to be some castor oil. So I've got my castor oil here. I'm adding castor oil because it actually helps to sustain the lather. It's a really nice oil to add into your bars but you do need to keep it quite low because again it's another one of these oils which really do accelerate trace and I'm just going to add this in. And that is it. Now I'm going to leave this all to one side and I will come back later to make the soap. So I hope this has been useful to you to watch how I make and why I put certain oils into my soap recipe. You are welcome to have a go at my soap recipe down below and even make any changes that you feel necessary to it to make your own as well. So the oils and lye are now sitting on the bench coming down to a room temperature so that I can use them. I generally do this as the very last thing that I'll do in my soap studio before going home and this is because I am impatient and I would sit there poking and prodding all day to see when my soaps are ready and in these summer months my room temperature on my soaps and oils doesn't get below 30 so generally I'll make them up in the afternoon and when I come out first thing in the morning which is generally about that 6, 7 o'clock in the morning they are nice and cool so I can start making soap with them so I hope you have enjoyed coming along on our soap preparations this week if you did why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below if you haven't already why not subscribe to the channel and if you hit that little bell sign it will let you know when the weekend video comes up and you can see which soap I'm going to be making with those soap oils so until then have a great one and I'll see you later bye